Orleans is one of America's favorite tourist cities. Millions of people travel there every year and spend hundreds of millions of dollars boosting the economy. The city's history is part of the charm. But Full Measure correspondent Josie Sturman visited the Big Easy and discovered some historic policies may be putting people at risk. From the street musicians wailing out jazz to the fern-covered balconies of the French Quarter, New Orleans is the place where America lets the good times roll. One of the best ways to see the Big Easy is on foot, if you dare. What message does that send to pedestrians? Take your chances. All over New Orleans, pedestrians are gambling, not in the city's casino, but on its streets. An audit released this October discovered only 62 out of the city's 463 intersections have a pedestrian crossing signal, that simple white light that tells you when it's safe to walk. That's only 13% of crossings. Bigger cities with even more intersections, like Memphis, Tampa, and Miami, have signals at more than 80% of their crossings. It's more like the, the exception rather than the rule when you see a pedestrian light. You're surprised to see a pedestrian light. Whereas in other major cities, they're pretty much on every corner. Becky Mowbray is with the New Orleans Inspector General's Office. It was their so audit the that showed the city of New Orleans was putting people at risk. And you watch these people. What goes through your mind when they're in those intersections? I worry about their safety. In the past three years, 40 pedestrians have been killed in New Orleans. To compare with two cities of similar size, Cleveland had 11 pedestrian deaths in that time. Minneapolis had six. New Orleans isn't unique, though, in its pedestrian problem. It sits with Tampa, New York, Atlanta, and 22 other cities on a federal government watch list. The guy who, who hit me said he didn't see me. Jolie Lemoyne was hit by a car last year at this intersection near New Orleans City Park. Traffic comes from 13 lanes in five different directions. You won't find a single pedestrian crossing light here, just outlined crossing lanes that have faded with age. Oh, I guess we can do this. So you do that with some hesitation when you hit this intersection? Absolutely. Well, you just don't know if someone's not using their blinker. How do you know if they're going to turn or not? It just, it's not worth it. To me, it's not worth it anymore to, to take that risk. So it's a guessing game. Lemoyne's guess landed her in rehab for eight months with a serious hip injury. Now she's an advocate for pedestrian safety. Just you hear the story over and over and over. Um, it just seems like eventually something would resonate with lawmakers and they would see, you know, some of these key intersections where they could improve, you know, uh, the signage. So why is New Orleans different? It all stems from a rule dating back at least 30 years that only allows crossings at intersections where traffic could be stopped in all directions. This was an informal policy, an unwritten policy, um, so in large part it had never been questioned. And no uh, one raised the alarm to say this seems a bit ridiculous. Uh, no one knew, I think, except for the people who actually were enforcing this unwritten policy. So. Nadine Van Dyke is the city's assistant inspector general. They're calling for New Orleans to move beyond its old ways toward more science and less intuition, or what she describes as the gut calls of engineers. It is not the recommended method. Uh, <laughs> it is absolutely not what one would hope for. Other cities are using modern methods to protect pedestrians, analyzing data and highlighting the problem. New York and D.C. both adopted a progressive program called Vision Zero, aimed at eliminating deaths. If New York looks at it as a design flaw to have accidents like this, how does New Orleans look at it? I think they don't. New Orleans has only discussed Vision Zero. Last spring, the city did begin a project adding countdown timers to some crossing signals. The Federal Highway Administration found they could cut the number of accidents involving pedestrians by 25%. But many of those signals are still covered in burlap bags, and only 44 spots in the city will get that upgrade. How many of us are going to have to die before someone decides that, okay, enough is enough and we're going to do something? Roxy Homstad is both blind and deaf. She says her service dog saved her life as she tried to cross a street without a signal. Even with upgrades, there are no plans for crosswalk signals in New Orleans with sound or vibration to alert the disabled. This is important. These are people's lives. 
This is people's livelihood. We are taxpayers. We deserve equal treatment. So for more than a month, we've been trying to get the mayor and the Department of Public Works to sit down and talk to us, but they have refused, although they did finally send us a statement. They told us that safety is a top priority and that they're already hard at work trying to improve pedestrian accessibility. The only problem is they did not answer a single one of the questions that we've been asking. Well, I have a feeling there'll be some follow-up, so we'll have you back on on the same story when we figure out what they're going to do about it. All right, thank you.